Welcome back, you wonderful human being, to another episode of the Pursuit of Freedom podcast. As per usual, I'm really excited to have you here. Without further ado, let's dive in. G'day, and welcome to the Pursuit of Freedom podcast. I'm your host, Rosie Burrows, and I'm on a journey to find my freedom so that I can help you do exactly the same. Join me each week as I share the stories of everyday people who have found their own path to freedom. I'm not going to focus on job titles and accolades because I don't care about that stuff and neither should you. I want to uncover what truly makes you tick. Who are you when you step away from society's expectations and follow your heart? I still haven't figured it out yet. Have you? Either way, buckle up because it's going to be one hell of a ride. In my last solo episode, it would have been episode three, I believe. I said that I was going to talk about saying no in that episode, and I never did. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Saying no is so important, but it's also something that a lot of us really struggle with. Saying no is freaking scary. It is scary. Or is that just me? Am I alone on that? I feel like I'm not, but let me know. I'm sure there's some of you out there who who aren't scared of saying no. But what I do know is it takes time to get to that point. And we are all on different journeys. So it's going to be challenging in different ways, I suppose, and easier for some people than it is for others. I am somebody who defaults to saying yes. That's my default. If someone asks me to do something, My body just wants to say yes, it's my default before I'm even thinking. I'm like, bleh, yep, let's go, let's do it. And I end up in situations that are less than ideal because sometimes I've said yes to do something that actually I don't want to do. Sometimes it's something that I want to do, but actually I don't have capacity to do right now. Sometimes the other person is taking advantage of me, but I say yes anyway. So there's not an equal exchange there. Who can relate to that? I can think of so many instances where that has happened to me and it has been a real journey over the years to realize or admit that I am doing the self-sabotaging behavior and it's on me, right? It's nobody else's fault but mine for saying yes Sometimes you're in a situation where there's power differences and you feel obliged to say yes, or perhaps it's family and saying family or no to family or no to loved ones or those you really care about can be bloody difficult. The stakes are so much higher, aren't they? But why is that? For me, it has a lot to do with, yes, I default to to saying yes, but underneath that, it's because I'm a people pleaser. I want to please people because it feels good when they tell me I'm doing a good job. That external validation is something that I draw a lot of my self-worth from. And I think it's okay to, to feel good when people praise you, but it shouldn't be our sole source of self-worth because it gets dangerous. And it makes saying no scary because you're worried you're going to let somebody down. You're going to disappoint them, or at least in your head, that's what you think, right? And it makes it really difficult. So I think it's important to get out of that mindset of continuously seeking that external validation. It's not even something that I was aware I was doing for a long time. But the more I reflect on it, the more I realize, actually, yeah, I am a needy little bitch. (laughs) I need people to tell me how good I'm doing, which I think we all need. And that is healthy. We do. It's important to acknowledge other people and for them to acknowledge us 100 percent. But we can't rely on other people to give us a sense of self-worth or happiness or purpose. We need to learn how to do that ourselves. And saying no is a really good way to do that. So why do I think it's so damn important? Well, saying no allows you to say yes 
to the things that matter. I'll say that again. Saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. Let that sink in. And this ties in really well with episode three, where I was talking about the importance of values, getting clear on those and how to actually get clear on those. Because when we're clear on those, we have a much easier time saying no to things because it becomes so much clearer. Well, if an opportunity doesn't align with your values, then why on earth are you saying yes to it? Seriously, why? Why? If it's taking you further away from the person you want to be, why are you doing it? Now, these things aren't black and white, are they? There's situations where we do need to do things that we don't necessarily want to do or or might not be aligned. We um, all need an income, so sometimes we are in a job that perhaps isn't fully aligned or perhaps sometimes we're worried about job security so we say yes to something our boss asks that we don't necessarily want to. You might be in a work environment where it's quite toxic and you don't feel safe saying no to your boss because you could lose your job. That is a genuine concern and a very real consideration and I want to acknowledge that. But it is not an excuse to letting yourself be trampled on. You deserve better. So what can you start doing to live that life that feels more aligned? Learn to say no. And it doesn't need an explanation. You don't need to explain yourself or justify yourself for saying no. It's not their business. If you'd like to tell them, you can, but it's not a justification. They don't need to know. It's like, no, I don't want to do that actually. And you could say thank you for the opportunity if you want, but you don't have to. You don't need to be rude about it, right? It's not It's not uh, an opportunity for you to just be an absolute asshole to somebody. It can be difficult when you're dealing with somebody who's an asshole to you, right, and you just want to shove it in their face. I don't know, sometimes you do that, right? But I think for me, I never feel good where, when um, – I have been a bit of an asshole to somebody, even if they're an asshole too. And deep down, I think they deserve it. It doesn't feel good because that's not aligned with who I am. But again, that's a personal call, totally up to you. But I think it's important to figure out how you say no. It's going to look different for everybody. Some people like to deliver it more softly and a bit less explicitly because it's less scary, right? You use words that are maybe a bit more vague. Um, For me, I think I've found a bit of a middle ground. So I do soften the blow sometimes um, to people, let them down easy, Um, you know, especially when it's people in my life that I really respect and care about and I'm very acutely aware of perhaps how me saying no will affect them. But that's a personal call for me. Um, I definitely feel empowered when I'm clear and set that very clear boundary. I think where it gets dangerous is you go into a situation going, right, I'm going to say no. Like I'm being brave. I'm saying no. And you come out of the situation and you've somehow compromised and said, yes, I've been there so many times. And I, I have a lot of shame around that. But we're human, right? This happens. And sometimes, hey, we do change our minds. That's okay. We can, but also be aware when somebody is getting in your head and making you question your decisions um, and actually go back or retract on that gut feeling that you had. Be aware of that. You really need to be in tune with what feels right to you. But again, doesn't mean don't have an open conversation with that person, right? So this, this isn't easy. But let me share a story. Um, Last year, I was in a situation where I'd said yes to an opportunity and it felt increasingly wrong as time went past, but I kept going, no, I have to do it. I don't want to let people down. You know, I, I just have to do it, suck it up, do it. Wasn't feeling great. And then it came to a head and it, it wasn't great, but I went, oh, well, what's done is done. 
I'm going to say no now. It's better now to say it than not at all. Yes, it's later than I probably should be saying no. I should have said no in the first place. Should have listened to my gut. But don't don't beat yourself up about that. I'm going to say no now. And that's what I did. And let me tell you what happened. So I worked in tertiary education. As some of you will know, I have a teaching background. I was trained for primary teaching, but I've taught in primary schools, secondary schools, um, and more recently in tertiary education, so universities as we call them in Australia. And, yeah, I, I, I'm in this position. I'm not, I've never been interested in having an academic career, but the role I was in presented opportunities to be involved in research and publications, and I'm somebody who likes to try new things. So at the time I had a very supportive boss and I said, yeah, like, let's give this a go. And I was fairly upfront with, you know, I don't think this is the direction I want to go in, but I don't really know. Let's give it a go. And she was fantastic. She really mentored me and taught me a lot of new skills, which was great, really invested in me. So that was cool, right? I was doing things. And as time went on, I'm kind of going, oh, I don't, I don't think research is for me, but it was okay because I was doing teaching and other things that I enjoyed and business development, a lot of partnership stuff. So it was cool. It was fine. The balance was good. I was happy. And then an external party sort of came to me with an opportunity, someone else who worked at the university. This is an example of how much this external validation means to me. They came to me and said, Rosie, we would love for you to help us with this publication. You know, we really um, would like your expertise and think this would be a great opportunity for you to, to be involved in a publication. And I was just so flattered. I was like, yes, let's do this. It wasn't something I had ever done before. I had no idea what I was doing. And, you know, I did mention that I would need support. So I tried to be upfront with that. And, you know, the person was like, yep, we can do that. Da, da, da. And I like to have expectations laid out very clearly. Um, so I asked, look, what's the time frame here? And I was told, oh, there is none. Like you can do it in your time. There's no rush. And I said, oh, well, what's the ideal? deadline, right? What what deadline do you want to be working to? Because for me, without a deadline, I don't function very well. But they kept saying, no, no deadline, no rush, whenever you can. I thought, oh, okay, cool. There's no pressure, right? It doesn't have to be top of my list. And it, you know, it was outside my job description. So I was doing it on my own time, wasn't paid for this, but I also saw the value of the learning opportunity for me. And hey, maybe I would enjoy being a published author and this is a new direction perhaps that my career could take. Well, a couple of months passed and then I got some more information as to what contribution I need to be making to the publication. Um, and I thought, okay, yep, I'm still not 100% how I'm going to do it, but that's okay. And I was told a mentor would come in and, and guide me. Um, and I had a lot of things going on in my official role at the time, so I prioritised them. And I don't know, maybe four or five months had passed and I thought, okay, I probably should start working on this. But I got an email from the person who had come to me with the opportunity going, oh, when do you think you'll be finished? And I thought, hmm, you know, they weren't rude or anything, not at all. But the undertone was, I want this done. And I said, oh, look, I've got a few things on at the moment. I've got marking, assessment, but, you know, it's, it's next on my list and I should get to it in the next few weeks. Um, but did you have a particular deadline in mind? So again, I'm trying to get the clear boundaries. And I was told, nope, no deadline in your own time, just sort of checking in. I thought, oh, okay. So again, I'm not prioritizing it because someone said there's no deadline. I'm like, oh, cool. I can sort of go back to worrying about my day-to-day -day work. Um, and I definitely see the role I played in this, right? Anyway, so that happened. And then there was a meeting with a couple of other colleagues, but also the person had come to me with a publishing opportunity. And then the person who was meant to be mentoring me, which nothing had happened. I didn't follow up to arrange this mentoring session, but I also didn't have their contact details and was told that it would be arranged for me, which never happened. So we're in this meeting talking about the publication I was involved in, but also a different one that my boss was involved in and perhaps I would support her with. Anyway, this, this mentor person is very experienced in, in his field he said, well, if you're not going to do it, this is in front of other people in the room. If you're not going to do it, we'll just find someone else. You know, this needed to be done weeks ago. 
we've got a deadline, we've got um, a number of publications to hit per year. And I was so taken aback by his tone and the way he was talking to me and in a public forum it was very uncomfortable but instead of pulling him up on that behavior and saying look I'm not comfortable with how you're talking to me I realize I haven't done work on it but I was told there was no deadline blah 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 and setting that clear boundary I didn't I just sort of went I did that awkward <laughs> laugh and said no I appreciate that I understand um, and when I'm give, not given a deadline, it's never top of my priority. But now I know that, you know, you want it now or yesterday, I'll prioritize that. And he just sort of, you know, whatever, and the conversation moved on. But it didn't feel great. It really didn't feel great. And the person who had came to me initially with this publication opportunity was in the room and didn't stand up for me which again, I didn't feel great. It was almost like, yeah, Rosie, you should know better. Perhaps I should have known better. I don't know. Yeah. And time passed. Um, and anyway, I got to work and, and did the contribution, emailed it off. Um, and this time it went to that mentor person. Hopefully you're tracking this story. I don't want to name names because that's just, I think it's unnecessary, right? And not... Um, not needed for me to tell this story and get the message across. So I emailed it to the mentor because they're the one with the most experience and I was told to email it to them. Um, and I got a very abrupt email back going, what is this? How dare you expect to be a listed publisher? This isn't enough. You need to be doing this, this, this and this and he explicitly outlined it. And he said, this needs to be done now and you need to be emailing me every day and I'll be giving you feedback. And I just thought, what the fuck? Like I was furious you know, the kind of angry where it's it, it can become irrational and I was crying, that kind of anger, not crying as in a pathetic, uh, sorry, um, where I was being in a more victim mindset but crying in just frustration and outrage, like how fucking dare you talk to me like that? And I was angry for a few reasons. The expectations that he had weren't the same as the expectations that were communicated to me by the lady who came to me with the opportunity initially. So there was a communication issue, right? There was one lady coming to me telling me what she wanted, but actually the person calling the shots was this mentor person, but he and I hadn't met directly and communicated. So it was just really messy. Anyway, I didn't respond straight away and I, I actually got some advice from my boss because I really respect her and I said, look, I don't know what to do. I said, I know this is going to impact our team because you're also working with this person. I said, look, I just, I just want to walk away. I don't want to do this. But I, I'm also aware there's a lot of relationships here on the line. What do you think? You know, what are your thoughts on this? I'm not sure how to move forward in a respectful way and in a way that doesn't sabotage your relationship with this person. And she was great. We kind of talked through a few things. And yes, one option was to say no. And another option, so she said, look, why don't you put it on your terms? So say, yes, look, I'll get it done. I can't do it. You know, uh, sorry. She said, you know, set a timeline on your terms. So say, yes, I can get it done. This is the timeline and this is the support that I will need. And I thought, okay, yeah, that, that seems like a good compromise. I don't really want to do it, but I've got to this point. I committed. That's on me. Um, but put it on my terms. This is the time frame I can do it in and this is the support I'm going to need. So that felt good. And my boss also said, oh, look, why don't you talk to the person who initially came to you with this opportunity and get her opinion on how you should approach it with um, the mentor person. I thought, okay, yeah, fair enough. Like I didn't really want to email the lady, but I thought, okay, yeah, it's respectful, right? So I told her, look, I'm going to say, yeah, clearly we've had a breakdown in communication and let's try get it back on track and I can get it done in the next six weeks. Um, but I'm going to need a lot of support from you to make sure I deliver what you want and also to a high enough standard. And I said to her, you know, what are your, what are your thoughts or something like that? And I think this is where I went wrong. I was seeking that validation and like, yes, Rosie, you can do that. Because the response I got was, Look, I admire you wanting to rectify this, which was great. Felt great. Pat on the back, right? Bit of validation. And then she said, because it was a Friday when I emailed her, she said, I suggest you 
Do as much as you can over the weekend and promise to deliver to what he has asked. And I just thought, fuck. But guess what I did? In my head, I said, okay, yeah, I've got to do it. I've got to work over the weekend and do this. I've got to deliver. That's what I was saying in my head because I couldn't let these people down. And so I said to her, okay, yep, I'll, I'll do my best to get what I've done, what I can on the weekend. And the weekend passed and, I, you know, I, I didn't do it because it didn't feel right. I thought, what the fuck am I doing? No, I'm not working on the weekend. This is unpaid work. I'm volunteering. I was helping you out. Yes, it's an opportunity for me too, but I don't owe you anything. So I sent the email to the mentor very respectfully and honestly, really, I said, look, I was a bit surprised by, you know, your response. These expectations weren't communicated to me. I think, you know, there's clearly been crossed wires here. And I said, look, I really want to help you get across the line. And then I said, look, I can do it within six weeks. I'm going to need support. Let me know if you'd like me to go ahead um, and I'll get started right away. And... I actually felt great sending that email. Typing it up was terrifying. In my head, I'm like, oh, shit, like this is scary. But I I remain professional, um, respectful, honest, and true to me. I set a boundary and did it on my terms. And this person took over a week to reply. And he's someone who generally replies very quickly. So I thought, oh, I've, you know, really made him pause. And he said, look, thank you, but... We need it done, so I'm going to do it myself. And I must say, inside, I was really relieved. I thought, good, I didn't want to fucking do it anyway. <laughs> but I think we ended on okay terms. You know, he said, look, if you ever want support more than moving forward, maybe we can work together. So I felt good. It was respectful, right, on both sides. But I think, you know, he's the kind of person that isn't challenged very much. A white gentleman, more than middle-aged, but I wouldn't say elderly, but someone who's always in a position of power. And I think very few people have said no to him, which is why he took such a long time to respond. But credit to him, he was respectful and took on what I said. And I appreciated that. And you know why it happened? Because I set a clear freaking boundary, a clear boundary. I was courageous and I did that and he respected it. So set boundaries. This is a whole other episode, right? Setting boundaries. I'm going to write that down. We will be talking about this. Boundaries are so bloody important and they help us say no in conjunction with being clear on our values. But yeah, that w- that's one story where I got really caught up in a situation. I said yes when I probably shouldn't have. By this stage, I was pretty clear that I didn't want to go down an academic path. And yet here I was doing a publication because someone headhunted me and I felt great and I felt worthy and they were going to offer me support and woohoo. You know, can't say no to these opportunities. How lucky am I? I don't have a PhD. And here I am, someone's offering for me to co-author on a paper. I got caught up in the people pleasing and in that external validation. And it kind of got me in a really tricky situation, but I turned it around and you can too. If you are in a situation you've said yes to and are realizing, crap, I shouldn't have said yes, I don't want to do this or I don't have capacity to do this, you can still say no. People change their minds. Consent, you can withdraw your consent. Don't forget that. Saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. So me saying no, finally, to this cleared up so much mental space for me. It was like this weight on my shoulders, yeah, and it was just getting in the way of things. So once I said no and I knew I didn't have to do it, it was just like, oh, such a sigh of relief, such a weight off my shoulders. You can hear my office chair creaking. I'm really sorry. It drives me nuts. I try to sit as still as possible, but I get rather animated when I'm talking. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. I do get animated and move around. But anyway, remember, saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. And as you know, I said no to continuing my nine to five this year. That's me saying no. I don't want to do that. And you know what that allowed me to say yes to? being more creative in my life and focusing on setting up my business and preparing to travel in my van with my dog. 
It's one of the best decisions I have made in a really long time. I feel so aligned. It's scary, but it's exciting. And it's all because I said no. I don't want this job anymore. And you know what? It was really hard. I really respected my boss and I could see how many opportunities this job could bring me. But guess what? It was opportunities on a path, if I was being honest with myself, that I didn't want to go down. I didn't want to work towards a PhD or, you know, to become an academic. I didn't want to do that. So why was I getting involved in research and in this space? You know, the nature of my role had changed over time from very business focused to more academic and researchy. And once I got brave, I said, you know what? I don't want to do this. It felt great. It was liberating. And yes, there was that fear, but I acknowledged it and did it anyway and had a respectful and open conversation with my boss. Saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. I've said that so many times this episode, so I hope it's drumming in. Remember, saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. Repeat that until you freaking believe it. Start living it. What is something you can say no to today? It could be something small. Maybe the friend you said yes to to catching up on the weekend, actually you're exhausted and you just need some time to recharge by yourself at home. Tell them no. They'll respect that. Let me an asshole about it. Just say, look, actually, you know, I know I said, you know, I wanted to go out for breakfast, but I'm just feeling really drained. I'm not going to be able to be present and enjoy your company. Um, so can we reschedule? Or maybe you don't want to reschedule. Be honest. Don't bullshit it, right? You need to be honest, but lead with empathy. And you will just be blown away at how many great things come from that. You know, by saying no to catching up with your friend on the weekend, you're saying yes to yourself, putting yourself first so you can recharge and show up as your best self. Why wouldn't you want that? When you show up as your best self, it benefits everybody. It benefits you. It benefits the people around you, your family. So what can you say no to today? Something little, something big, whatever it is, look inside and say no and, th and reflect on how it makes you feel. For me, it's just invigorating and liberating. It feels fantastic. So much fear beforehand and I actually feel sick often before I do it. And then I do it and go, whoa. That was amazing. And I feel so proud of myself because it is scary and it is difficult. But let me tell you, the more you practice saying no, the easier it becomes and the easier it is to start putting yourself first. Saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. Don't forget it. You are worth it. You deserve to put yourself first. Say no that, so that you can say yes to the things that matter in your life and you can actually move towards living the life that you want to, that feels aligned. We are all deserving of that. It looks different for everybody. Sometimes there are restrictions to what is safe for us to say no to. But really think about what you can say no to. Challenge yourself. You might go, oh, no, I can't say no to that. It's too risky. But actually, is it? You're just chicken shit. <laughs> I'm definitely chicken shit at times. So challenge yourself. Maybe there's someone in your life who can help pull you up on your crap, right? But of course, think about your safety as well. But let me say, you can move forward. No matter how small those steps are, you can get out of whatever situation you're in. You can. You can. And you don't have to do it alone. Okay? You can get support. It's not a sign of weakness. I've found it harder than the past to ask for help because I feel like I'm incompetent. That's a load of crap. How capable are you if you go out and ask for help? How vulnerable is that? How courageous is that? That's the kind of person I want to be. I want to be brave. And I want to be doing the things I want to be doing. I don't want to be in situations where I'm doing stuff that actually doesn't feel right or I don't want to do or I don't have capacity to do that are taking away from what's important to me that are actually affecting my mental and physical well-being. Saying no allows you to say yes to the things that matter. Whew, okay, I'm not saying that again. Have a wonderful day. Think of something you can say no to today. And I want you to let me know. 
Find me on LinkedIn. Send me an email, rosie at kukalini.com, K-O-O-K-A-L-I-N-I, rosie at kukalini.com. Let me know. I want to hear it. What have you said no to? What are you planning to say no to? And how did it feel? Your life is going to get better when you say no. Have a fabulous day. You are worth it. And I'll catch you in next week's episode. See you later. If this episode resonated with you at all, could I please ask that you share it with a friend who you think could get value from it? And whilst you're doing that, make sure you follow and subscribe to the podcast so that you never miss another episode. And whilst you're following or subscribing, please leave us um, a rating, preferably five stars, and also a written review. Doing each of these things is going to help this podcast reach more people and impact more lives, which is at the end of the day is what we're here to do. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Remember, you matter, you're worth it, and you are so, so capable. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you next week.